again. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Cocktails and Cheese number seven. We were just discussing that we've done so many of these now. Um, this is Rachel. Hello. And Sarah. This is Sarah. <laughs> she literally said right before we started, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> I didn't know. I'm like, how do I want to say it? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But here we are. Um, we've got two really fun cocktails tonight. Um, some things we've been wanting to try personally and kind of yeah. created some fun recipes. Um, Gina's behind us on the YouTube. <laughs> the YouTube. I said the Instagram earlier. And Sarah was like, I'm like, I don't know. She can answer any questions you have. You don't have to have a YouTube account to type in the questions. Um, she'll be there. She'll yell them at us. We'll answer them if we can. If we don't, can't answer them, don't know the answer, you're closer to Google than we are, so just use that. So there you go. There you go. Um, if you want to take a look at our plate this evening, I've turned it around so it's the same direction as yours. I opened my crackers, that's why it looks a little bit different. But top left hand side of the crackers is going to be the Mita Crema. Top right hand side, I'm trying to do this upside down, is the Little <laughs> Mountain. Bottom left, if you can see, is the Cl Cabot Clock Thumb Black Label, and then right hand side is the Lamb Chopper. We've also got some fresh fruit, some dried fruit, berries, chocolate covered almonds in here, and then also an uh, orange marmalade. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I keep thinking, like, should we be doing it <coughs> clockwise? Like, we always do it like top left, top right, and then bottom left, bottom right. You do not read about clockwise. Okay. All right. Just checking in. <laughs> <laughs> Because some people, but it makes more sense if that's a circular plate. Then you're yes. like doing that. And it's not a square. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to do, yes, the top two with the first cocktail, the bottom two with the second cocktail. But Sarah and I were discussing earlier that we want to try to save some cheese. It's going to be hard. Yes. Um, but save some cheese and try it with the other cocktail because we didn't get to do that when we were um, taste uh, testing these. So it's always fun because like they'll probably be really good. Yeah, like I, I'm, I won't really want to try the Mita Crema with the second cocktail because yes. we were doing it different days. So the Mita Crema is great with everything. It's, it's one like of a, our new favorites. It's like the Pinot Noir of cheeses. Yes. Like yeah. Good with everything. Yeah, good with everything. Thank you. I'm like maybe that doesn't make sense. No, it does. <laughs> it pairs with everything. That's what we found. Like if you're ever unsure about or you're like having trouble finding a cheese that pairs with a cocktail, this works every time. And yeah. it's like cheater to pick it but it's yeah so good. but other people don't know that we just know that now you know that so now <laughs> you can be like ooh, uh, awkward um, all right so two cocktails today the first one is the corona sunrise and for those of you who are like eh, on beer I think you're still gonna like this um, it gets like the carbonation from the beer and like let's be honest corona doesn't taste I mean like I love corona just to be clear but it, it's not a strong flavor so really yeah. you're just gonna get the carbonation from it we're gonna add some fun things um, and then the second one is a cucumber cocktail that we're super excited about. We couldn't decide if we want to do like watermelon or cucumber or Something what. Something super summery. Yeah. So we'll do watermelon next time maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah, but we love cucumber and it's health. We're basically making a green juice. So yes, just don't even worry. This is my kind of green juice. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> my morning green juice before I leave for work. <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. Although I would recommend trying the cucumber juice before you make the cocktail. It is earthy. <laughs> Yes. It kind of tastes like dirt. <laughs> it kind of tastes like, yeah. I mean, cucumbers are so delicious and refreshing. And yeah. then when you juice it, it like gets so bizarre. But then you just add some gin and it's fine. Exactly. It's yeah. totally, you're going to love it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so the first one is called the Corona Sunrise. And where did we get the inspiration for this recipe, Sarah? Um, we just thunk it up right in our brains. AKA TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> We were seeing TikToks about these like just super easy cocktails that you can make like on the beach, like at the pool. Straight in the bar. Wherever. Bottom. Yeah, you like don't need anything basically. Of course I'm gonna be like, and hey, you need your juicer and your oh no, there's water in here. Okay, it's fine. Everything's fine. Alright, so to begin, this is very important. This is gonna be really hard. We're gonna open our beer bottles. <laughs> Sarah. Thank you. And then this is gonna be even harder than what we just did. You're gonna drink down to right above where the corona, where it says the corona. Like where the crown is. Yeah, crown. like below the crown. Cheers. Cheers. Who's gonna win? I'm spilling. <laughs> okay, I was gonna take my time. <laughs> no, I'm gonna like, <laughs> <We have> to, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna spill on our white shirt. 
you can take your time because we got to juice something. So that was just like a fun bit we tried. Did it work? I don't know. So basically you're making room for the ingredients we're putting in it. That doesn't make sense. And if you don't like beer, have the person you're with who likes beer drink it or, you know, toss it, whatever. Yeah. Be, wow, you're art. Okay. All right. Just because I'm talking. <laughs> Do you want to tell a story while I... Um, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> All right. So maybe you want to start juicing some things. Sure. I'm the sous chef. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to put in here, once you do get down to below the crown, which again, working on. All right. Oh, I have this really cool juicer. Shout out to OXO. You know, <laughs> one of my best friends works for OXO, so I have many of their products. This is one of my wedding gifts from there. Not to brag. Um, but I love these. Do you have one of these? No, but I love this one. Yeah, it's like super cheap and it's just so nice because it had a little pouring spout. So sometimes with our drinks, you see us juicing it right into it and we'll do that with our second drink. But with this one, because you, you're literally just mixing everything in the <laughs> beer bottle, it's like you can't. Like if you did, it just would go everywhere. Yeah. So you need a little spout situation. So we did it in a measuring cup when I had yeah, to bring it, it in. Yeah, it works great. Yeah, so you can just use that regular hand juicer into the measuring cup and put it in. And this has a little strainer too. Yeah. You can see that to get it seeds out. No pulp. There, there ends up being some pulp, and I did bring a strainer, but that seems like you could double It's not it. that much. Yeah, not enough to make a raft in your beer. Although Sarah did say when we were talking about cucumbers, she said, just don't make it chunky. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Well, we had debated muddling the cucumber at the bottom of the drink and getting the... Because mm -hmm. really, the cocktail came from a cocktail we had had together somewhere it was after a benissimo after class, a benissimo class we we did a, oh platter making at um little italy food hall so we stopped and got a cocktail after and we got this like green cucumber thing and i really wanted it to be like bright green so muddling the cucumber was not going to do that for us and i also don't want chunks of cucumber in my drink which i think so, is completely fair yeah yeah i support you on that so we made our own cucumber juice for the next one how many oranges do we need we need one orange per beer actually very citrus oh. forward um, but first, if you want to take your tequila, as always, this is enough for two portions, so feel free to measure it out or just pour half in each bottle. You can also skip the tequila if you don't want it to be, like, super boozy, because honestly, you, I don't think you can taste it. I don't think you can either. Which is, like, good and bad. I, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm not going to measure it because we're just, we're loosey-goosey mixologists over here. And make sure, this is fine when you're pouring the tequila, but when you're pouring the citrus, pour slowly or you're going to get in explosion situation. So my one orange ended up being five tablespoons or a third of a cup. If you have, if you don't want to juice oranges, you could definitely use orange juice. Or yeah. if you had like hog, like the pineapple orange guava, Ooh, that would be good in here too. Yes. Sorry, airplane. What's it called? We call it in Point Loma, the Point Loma pause. I don't know what we call it here. Nothing. The Del Mar disruption. <laughs> Del Mar disruption. <laughs> Stuff. We're gonna pat we're gonna patent it, no yes. copyright it, whatever yes. it is. TM. Doing a great job, Sarah. See, look at that, nice and slow. The first time we did this, we spilled everywhere. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Oh god. No, we're gonna do it. Alright, I'll start talking about the cheese while you're is that okay? Go for it. You, okay. So we're gonna do <laughs> <laughs> This is why we have multiple towels. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do one orange per drink. We're gonna do one color. lime per drink. And of course you can adjust this to your liking. Um, and then for like the final fun effect, uh, we're gonna put the grenadine in and that's what is gonna make it like that really super fun color. Um, we also included an extra lime, not because someone here, not to be mentioned, ordered too many limes. Oh, that wasn't me, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, I just said someone. You a whole box of limes back there. <laughs> If anyone needs limes, we're selling them. <laughs> 25 for a dollar. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Gina, there's not that many. <laughs> um, but no, we wanted to include an extra lime. Again, we did order too many, but because you can cut a wedge and do the classic Corona situation, which I think this thing adds to the fun. Of course. All right. So as Sarah's doing that, um, let's talk about the cheeses. You're doing great. Thanks. Okay, so the Mita Crema. I said it weird yesterday, so now I'm like- I kept saying Mitacrema, and I'm like, please, don't. I was at the Jersey Shore, you guys, for vacation with my family. Some things just happened, and now my voice isn't normal anymore. No. 
Um, so the metacrema um, is actually sheep's milk, which is shocking because it has that like bone white color of goat's milk. I actually don't know how they do that. Is it because it's so fresh? I should. I think this so up. because it um, it's the freshest sheep's milk cheese I have ever had. Yeah, and they sell it in logs, which is what we have, but they also sell it in like tubs. I think like bulk tubs because they they kind of sell it as like a. Um, Fromage Blanc is Fromage Blanc cow generally. Yeah, yeah. So that's what they kind of they sell these cute little jars. I can't get them. I tried. <laughs> she tried. Um, but it's like cream cheese, like the best cream cheese you've ever had, actually. But um, like that almost like sells it short a little bit. Yeah, like I guess you're right. It's like cream cheese like times ten. Yeah, elevated. There we Super go. elevated cream cheese. Um, it is so it's sheep, like we said, even though it looks like goat. And honestly, if I tasted this blindfolded, I would I I couldn't tell you it was sheep, um, which is probably why I don't think I'm ever going to go for. There's a certification. It's like a sensory evaluation certification for the American Cheese Society. And it's like a sommelier of wines. Like you have to blind taste test things and say, you know, what kind of milk they are, where they're from, how long it's aged. Like. There's no way. I, I hope they don't put this on the test. That would be. This is a hard one. That would be rude. Um, so it's from Spain. It's from Murcia in Spain. Um, it's only aged for ten days. Um, it's obviously pasteurized because, as we've said before, in the U.S. you can't sell any cheeses that are raw. I like how I'm making you do the work. I know. I've never done right. this before. <laughs> I didn't even tell you this was gonna happen before. <laughs> Just, I was the one who told you not to juice the things ahead of time. Yes, so that's what happened. I was just like, I'm just going to juice it ahead Sorry, of time. Sorry, I'm doing a little... Oh, boy. Sorry. Oh, God. I'll clean. I wash my hands before. All right. Um, yeah, so it's aged for 10 days. And because in the U.S., we can't sell anything that's unpasteurized and aged under 60 days. So this is fine because it's pasteurized. And you can tell it's super... Um, wow. <laughs> this You're really doing great. didn't happen the other day. I know, it really didn't. Oh, yeah, here. Maybe I shook them before. Um, you can tell it's super fresh because there's no rind on it. So as a cheese ages, it either develops a rind or they put a rind on it um, before they make it. So like a Gouda will have a wax rind. But with a cheese like this, like we've, we've done Cana de Cabra before. So if you remember that one, it kind of comes in that log situation too, but it's got a rind that's developed over it. And that's because it's aged a little bit longer and they coat things on it to develop the rind. So this is just super fresh. You can use it for anything. It's like sweet, creamy. There's like a mild cheap flavor, maybe tangy. And they use the milk of the Lacone. I don't know how to pronounce Lacon? that word. Lacone? I've heard both. It's the famous sheep uh, breed that is used to make Roquefort, which is one of the most famous French cheeses. So that's why it's notable, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and then we've talked about this before, but sheep's milk has a little bit more fat in it, which just makes it richer and creamier and amazinger like more <laughs> more buttery like i feel like sometimes goat cheese can just be like not watery tasting but just like this just has more fat to it i feel like yeah and um i like to do like a smoked salmon situation like on a Ooh, bagel with it. but yeah I'll, I'll do it with the metacrema or i'll do it with the woolly woolly like something just a little more robust with cream cheese and it totally elevates it like it's out of this world mm -hmm. um so we actually we got this cheese in what like a month ago and we've been obsessed with it that we've already paired it in another class yeah. we did a class with clever fox rum where they made some cocktails which were amazing and we paired it with their spicy paloma so like a kind of spicy grapefruit drink and it was perfect all this to say it's perfect with everything what's next boss grenadine we might have to drink a little bit from it first you want to do that Mm. We're perfecting, so maybe we need to go down a little more. See, this is the problem. It's really not a problem at all. No, I think it's good no matter what. Yeah, but we really like citrus, so we should have said this before. If you wanted to start out with half of an orange and half of a lime, you could, but we I like, we like the citrus, citrus yeah. Just put a little grenadine. I drink it just and a little bit. we have some garnish, too. Perfect. Look at that! Look at that. Ooh. Ooh, mine really stayed, like... Yeah, like sunrising. Yeah. So you can put as little or as much as you want. Obviously, um, the more you put, the sweeter it'll be. I like mine a little sweet. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, mine's good. And then this is the tricky part because it's like it's oh, in I'm the not bottle. Doing mine. You're not. 
Why why does it still look like a sunrise? Okay, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Cause that's just if you haven't spilled a ton of citrus down the side of your cup already, put a little <laughs> um, lime. I just cut the lime in half. We're gonna just put a little on the side here. And what are we putting on it? We're putting on tahine, our favorite. I'm our gonna favorite make a mess furniture. doing this. Yeah, here, do it. Just okay. Oh, do it on the table. I don't yeah, know. Here. You're the boss. Yeah, <laughs> you'll clean it up later. <laughs> just put it right on the side here. You could even put some in your drink if you want, so you've got that little side. Yeah, it's usually not as messy, obviously, because you don't have liquid in the glass before you do this. But, um, you know, this is just a special thing. I'm Earlier, put a I was like, in mine. Yeah, can you put a little in mine, too? That's going to be that much. Okay, perfect. And yes. wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. How am I supposed to drink out of that? Put it in. <laughs> Cheers. Look how cute this is. It's mine so stayed really, cute. like, red at the bottom and then orange at the top. Like a true sunrise. Yes. Yours is like when it's about to rain and the whole sky is like so dark. Yeah. Mine's like actual summer. Do you, do you have some poetry written about it that you, <laughs> you want to share? Cheers. A Taylor Swift song this cool summer? I'm sure. <laughs> so we should have called it. Slacking. Guys, we're going to the Taylor Swift concert in August, so we're just we're really like theming things around it. We're we almost to Taylor Swift all day. Sorry to everyone else that works here. <laughs> it was just us, so it was great. Truly. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so refreshing. To me, it doesn't taste like beer at all. What are you? I. Is the situation? Yeah. I stuck my finger in it to twist it, and then here we go. Here now we are. Um, so, so we did the metacrema, uh, but I did want to make a note about grenadine. It's traditionally pomegranate, just so everyone knows. It's this not is, cherry! Yeah, which is blue someone's mind. Mine. <laughs> um, this one is roses, so it's not actually pomegranate. They just use like corn syrup and things. It's still delicious, not to knock roses. I use their sweetened lime juice in my martinis. Don't come at me. We'll do that one time. Um, but yeah, it's traditionally pomegranate. And if you get like a more um, like handmade or like a, you know, a smaller batch, co like a company that makes it, it'll be actual pomegranate juice and it will cost $1 million because it's pomegranate juice, but it's delicious. We'll have to make our own sometime for the really? cocktail class. Yeah. You know, you can do that? Yes. Wow. Sarah's a chef. She always, I'm just like, this is so exciting. We can do it next time. Okay. Did you try it with the minute No. We haven't even gotten there. All right, Rachel, everyone loves the drink and three people love the shirt. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Excellent news. Nice. <laughs> You are fashionable. Trying. This is really like a Roger shirt. So Roger and Gina are the owners of Benissimo. We love them so much. Gina's behind the camera now. That's not why I said we love them so much. We really do. And Roger has some fantastic shirt options. So I'm always just trying to like compete with him at the like company party. I'm like, what's he got? What's he gonna wear? You know? So this is one of those that I was like, mm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You done good. <laughs> this is so good with the cheese. What are you getting? What's happening? Like candy. It tastes like candy. Ooh. Oh. I just like the plain cheese. I'm not gonna eat the cracker. No, I like never eat the cracker. Not because, I mean, I love a cracker, but it just doesn't need it. It tastes, tastes like so candy. good with it. And again, like the, the purpose of a pairing is to make sure you can taste both the drink and the cheese and that you're not, you know, diminishing any of the flavors of either and that you're kind of bumping up the flavors of both that's like an excellent pairing because we were we were pairing some ciders and cheeses earlier and some of them were like it tasted fine like it didn't taste bad but we're really looking for those like you can really taste the drink you can really taste the cheese and they make each other better taste better yeah yeah um all right so the second cheese Ooh, I love this one. This is my new favorite cheese. Everyone keeps making fun of me. This and the Apricity. She sells this to everybody. I know. So if you come in, I will be recommending it. Sorry, not sorry. Um, so it's in the top right-hand corner. If you're kind of looking at it where, like, you know, right side up, meaning, like, the sticker, you can read it. Um, but it's in long triangles, and it's right next to the blackberries. So this is called Little Mountain, which is hilarious because we also have another cheese. It's by, it's by Raleigh, right? What? The tall grass? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, but it's Wisconsin. Yes. Okay, we have a tall grass reserve right now and a little mountain that are right next to each other, and the little mountain is much bigger than the tall grass, and I don't know why I find that to be hilarious. That is funny. Anyway, they're both excellent. Um, but this is made in Wisconsin. It's cow's milk, and it's unpasteurized, but it's aged over 60 days, so we're good. Um, it's aged at least six months, um, and a lot of these creameries, you're going to tell us more about it, but... 
they don't necessarily have a set aging period for their cheeses. They wait until it's at maximum flavor. Mm -hmm. So for some wheels, depending on conditions, it might be six months. For some, it might be seven. For some, it might be five. But they're just constantly tasting their cheeses. So that's why you might see like a lot of um, ranges of ages people will list, which we'll come to when we when we get to the Cabot cloth bound. They'll list like a range or they'll be like, it's aged at least six months, but this one could be eight. We don't know, but it's just to get that consistency and depth of flavor. Um, but this one is from Schulzburg, Wisconsin, which you were in, right? Yes, I was. <laughs> uh, a couple of months ago, I the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, they sponsored a trip for Southern California cheese people. So I went as like the lowest of Southern California, most south. <laughs> so not low end. <laughs> most low on the California map. Everyone else is up in LA. Uh, um, and we went on this trip. It was like four or five days. It was hardcore. It was all day, everyday cheese. Did like, you eat a vegetable at all? We I ordered a salad and it was like this big, <laughs> so small. <laughs> but um, it was great. We went to different cheesemakers every day, four or five a day. Um, we visited all kinds of different cheesemakers that make cheese a lot of different ways. There are not, there's not just one way to make cheese, one way to run your farm. It's like all these, this whole spectrum. Um, this was one of the things I learned about the age ranges. It's one of the things I learned while I was on the trip, and it just like totally blew my mind mm -hmm. that. Like, because I always wondered, we have cheeses that say, like, three to six years. Like, well, which one is it? And it's like, well, they're just trying to get the cheese to taste the same every time. And you're like, well, duh, that makes sense. It does. But um, we visited with Chris Raleigh. He's a fourth-generation cheesemaker, sweetest man on the planet, brought us into his cheesemaking facility. It was the first in-person in tour he had allowed since COVID. So wow. we were the first people back into the cheesemaking plant. And he was just so nice and telling us all the stuff he does every day. He hauls all of the milk himself twice a day by himself every day for the whole year. Never takes a day off from cheese and from milk. And he has like this custom built truck that hauls his milk so he like is smaller so he doesn't because he gets from different farms like close by. He hauls 40,000 pounds of milk a week. And then that makes 4,000 pounds of cheese a week. Can you imagine not being able to, like, take a vacation, really? No. Because the cows always have to be milked. The cows so, like, always have to be milked. It's not, you don't have to be making cheese all the time. But. Yeah, so they take the milk, they do other things with it, they sell it for other things, they um, feed it to the animals, they do all kinds of things with it. So it never goes to waste. Um, but just, so it's Chris Raleigh and two guys who make all the cheese. It's three of them. That's it. And I wish I could show you like the pictures of like so lines and lines and lines and lines and lines of cheese aging and it's just three guys doing it every day. It's insane. And we were really fortunate to get our hands on this wheel. Mm -hmm. um, it just won some award. Well, in 2016 it won the best in show. So the best, uh, the highest award at the American Cheese Society Conference. So the best in the US. And they, I, they weren't prepared for it. So the cheese like sold out very quickly this is like the first like oh, you know round of it back. coming back like post covid and all that and since we were on the trip we're be we've been getting a lot of like first dibs on things so our com the awesome. distri distribution company called us and they're like we've got a few wheels do you want one You're like, and yes. we snagged one right away and it's it's crazy it's great it's, yeah, it's amazing. Um, it is an alpine style cheese made in the style of Appenzeller, if you've ever had that. Um, I just tasted it with it. Again, I love it. It's so good. And this is one of those cheeses, again, like as you let it sit out and it warms up, it's going to get even stronger in flavor. But it's so good. It's almost like buttery too. It's got that taste of like Appenzeller or like a Hollerhock or a Schnebelhorn, something like that. Those are probably crazy words if you don't know what I'm talking about, but um, other Swiss alpine, <laughs> yeah, Swiss cheeses. Um, but it's like got a butteriness that I feel like I haven't necessarily found in other ones. In other American alpine cheeses? Yeah, dishes. and I almost feel like it brings out the citrus in the drink a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's tasting very orangey today. Mm. Maybe we had a bigger orange. That's the problem with being like, put in one orange. Mm -hmm. You're like, mm, well, no. You still like it with it? Oh, yeah. Good? No, okay. it's delicious. I love both. I want to save some of the cheeses to yes. try with the next one. And we are sharing. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, so the Raleigh story is so cool because those are the types of places we really like to support, both in Europe and the U.S., but um, domestically, you know, cheese, it's a big thing here, but it's not as big as it is in Europe. And I know a lot of American cheesemakers, like smaller ones especially, struggle a little bit. Um, they're not making big money, you know, all this stuff. So it's just really nice to be able to support, like, this these three guys making this because it's a it's amazing like it's we're not just like just supporting them because it's like it's amazing (laughs) and just like to know like the guy who makes the cheese took time out of his day to sit and talk with us and kind of tell us his story and it's just you just you want to work with them because you, you know the person behind the cheese so yeah, it's fun for us to do that. It's totally fun, and it's it's awesome when the cheese tastes as amazing as this one does. Yes, that's there you go. How are we liking the cheese? Is everyone doing good? Great. Thumbs up. What do you think, Gina? I love both of them. Okay. Right, the first one tasted like candy. Yeah. Yeah, and um, this one. Not as candy-like. Not as sweet. Yeah, yeah. So maybe the citrus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gina said she agrees if you couldn't hear that the first one tasted like candy, like Mm -hmm. a little sweet. Mm -hmm. And the second one is a little more citrusy. Mm -hmm. Fun stuff. All right, I know we're not done with this cocktail, but we'll save it for later when we got to clean up. (laughs) Put it here. All right. You guys ready for Cool as a Cucumber, which I did not, I did not consult you on this name, but it just, I I don't know. Because I had written in my book, Cucumber Drank, which is like a 90s thing. Like, instead of drink, you're mm-hmm. like, let me get that drank. And you were like, what is happening? So. <laughs> I texted her, are you tipsy right now? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> no. I was just like making a joke. Whatever. So here we are. No, it's okay. cute. I liked it, though. This nope. one's cuter, though. Well, all right, again, water. It's clean. What? It was clean. You I actually made the cucumber. I did, but I made the cucumber drink for Gina. Sorry, oh. cool as a cucumber yes. for Gina first. Mm-hmm. So this one is very exciting, I think. Well, you know, it's good, but it involved like multiple processes. So the ingredients are a cucumber infused gin, Benedictine, which we'll go over what that is. It's an herbal liqueur. It's right here. If you want to take a look, highly recommend being this being like a, an addition to your bar cart just because it adds some sweetness and a little and some herb, herbiness to it. Um, it's really nice and a bunch of different drinks. Um, so simple syrup, we decided to skip the simple syrup again, not because someone didn't want to make simple syrup for everyone, but because we thought it would be fun to show you how you can just use sugar cubes and it's so easy, especially when you're shaking a drink. All you have to do is throw a sugar cube in and maybe a little bit of water if you want, depending. Um, and that's it. That's your simple syrup. Like you don't need to be buying it. Like it's you can shake the drink aggressively enough that the sugar dissolves and that's exactly what you need. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Thank you for explaining that. You're welcome. Chef. Um, and then we're doing the juice of half of a lime, and then we have our cucumber juice, and then we have a couple of garnishes here. So we're going to do a lavender garnish, and then these flowers are cucumber flowers. So they're just like cucumber blossoms, right? Yes. Um, you know, they may have gotten a little wilty. We packaged this up yesterday, but they're still looking cute. And then Sarah made very fun garnishes here that we packaged up for you as well, and then she's going to kind of demonstrate how she does that. Yes. Um, so this one we're going to build in a shaker. You don't really need to other than the sugar cube shaking. If, if you are going to stir it, which would be totally fine, um, you will need to like dissolve that in some water, which you can just do in the microwave for like 10 seconds if you want. Um, so with the gin, cucumber gin, you can tell it's kind of like a cloudy green. It did turn kind of green. Can you see this bottle from... So this is what we did. We just shaved cucumbers nice and thin. I would have been thinner if I had a mandolin, but here we are. Um, And this is a cool bottle that Sarah got for me. And the cool part is, I think I may have showed this before. I can't remember. The bottom comes off like that. So you can put the cucumbers in through there. And then there's a top on here. And then you can just pour it from the top like you would normally. But so this is just gin. I think we use Bombay. Um, that's been sitting with these cucumbers in it for like two days. It can be up to like one or two weeks, but even just two days gives it that nice color and a little bit of the flavor. Should you refrigerate it after when you put the cucumbers in? You don't have to. And a lot of people say that the infusion happens slower when it's colder, oh. which makes sense. Um, and the reason you don't have to, even though you normally you would refrigerate a cucumber, is because it's all alcohol. So yeah. it's going to ward off yeah, bacteria or anything like that. So you do not need to refrigerate it, but you're welcome to. Yeah, so this has been sitting out. 
You're gonna get a ton more cucumber flavor by cutting your cucumbers in slices like this because there's a lot more surface area. So there's more cucumber touching the gin. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we're gonna we're thinking of doing more infusions like this because it's fun, right? Yeah. And it's easy. Different. Yeah. And these bottles make it so nice. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I have one. All right. Mine matches yours. <laughs> oh, is it the orange? I, uh, no, it's the pink, pinky corally oh, color. Oh, nice. Right. It looks, but it's shorter. All right, so I'm gonna do both of the cocktails in the same shaker, just because why not? And then we'll just split it between yep. the two um, cups. So first we're gonna put the cucumber gin in, all of it. Again, this is two ounces and we want one ounce per cocktail. I'm gonna do that. We're gonna put the Benedictine in. So yeah, this is about, so about a quarter ounce each. Again, feel free to measure it. This size cup is about an ounce. So I think I gave everyone like a little over a half ounce just in case there was some spillage or anything. A little more isn't gonna hurt it, but it is definitely something like this bottle, if you buy it, will last you a while. Cause if you're really just putting a quarter ounce in any drink, because mm -hmm. if you try to drink this, which I recommend you try it. She asked me if I wanted to try it. I'm like, is it good? <laughs> and she's it. like, it's horrible. <laughs> no, it's just very strong. You wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't no, drink it. You wouldn't. No, <laughs> you wouldn't. It's like, it's terrible. But it's like, it. <laughs> it's like thick too, kind of syrupy. Yeah. And it's got that sugar. And we'll go into, like I said, I got some real fun stories about Benedictine. Oh, God. Yeah. I had never had it before. I know. Um, my roommate, Morgan, who might be listening, I feel like I mention him all the time, but he really is a cocktail aficionado. And he introduced me to this. And since then, like, we've been making drinks with it, trying it out every time we need sort of a sweetness, but also an, an herb herbalness that's not a word herbaceousness herbaceousness there you go thank you sarah and herbaceousness this is perfect because there are other things like elderflower where you can get the sweetness and the floral there mm -hmm. are things like chartreuse if you want something more bitter so it's like when you're building these like we tried it without that remember and it was just missing something oh you I weren't even here, here. no i didn't uh, get that we did not day. plan this right but anyway we uh me and christina and Eamon tried it without the um Benedictine and just needed an extra something. Like it was good, but it was just like, it was one note and we didn't want it. It wasn't that. missing. It was missing. It, yeah, it was missing something. So at home, we went through a couple of different trials without the cucumber gin, it was my own gin. Um, and we tried the elderflower and it was it was good. That's what we had that other cocktail. Oh, the right? other had cocktail the we had at the place had elderflower, yeah. But I like this a little more, so I hope you do too. Um, all right, so Benedictine, and then instead of the simple syrup, I'm just gonna plop these sugar cubes right on in here. And we're gonna shake aggressively. All right, juice of half a lime, so you did a whole lime. I did. Okay, perfect. Look at that. Might have some orange in there too, that could be fun. All right, there you go. And then our cucumber juice. Do you wanna tell everyone how we did this? Um, you stick a bunch of cucumbers in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you use any water? Uh, yeah, like a splash, maybe like two tablespoons. Yeah, just like a touch a of water. She was using a Nutribullet, so like, you know, it's about like this size. Threw some cucumbers in, just a little bit of water so it starts to blend. Blend it up, and then we strained it through cheesecloth to get all of the sediment out, all of the pulp mm -hmm. and stuff. And then you're left with this really nice kind of silky juice. It's very earthy, very like... Uh, Soil, like cucumbers, you would never say tasted earthy until you then grind them up into a juice. Um, <laughs> but we kept the skin on. There's lots of nutrients mm -hmm. in the skin. Uh, we knew we were going to strain it. It was also going to help with the color, help with the flavor. So um, that's how we made it. Yeah, and the straining through the cheesecloth is very important because it's such a fine strainer. It really keeps all those chunks yeah. aside. <laughs> You like um, cheesecloth, you can get at the grocery store. I bought this like muslin reusable cheesecloth on Amazon that I use all the time. It's hanging up drying like in the back yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, but you, it's easiest if you get it wet first and then you can kind of line your strainer. You can put it in a bowl of some sort in another strainer if you have one and then double layer works sometimes nice. And then you just kind of gather it up and then squeeze it out how you would imagine. Yeah, the, if you've so, never used cheese before. So much juice comes out of it. And yeah. the only thing we did before with the cucumbers is just make sure they were really clean. And I cut off the ends. I don't really think you need to because it would have been strained out. Yeah. And I cut them into like, you know, this like maybe four inch chunks just, just because it wasn't a Vitamix and I wasn't sure how it was going to happen. Um, 
All right, so with the shaker, we have everything in, and then we always want to put it, our ice in last because we don't know how long it's going to take us to build our ingredients because I'm, like, be, you know, building something, and I'm like, oh, God, I forgot this, and imagine if the ice was in there, it'd be melting the whole time. Yeah. And then we immediately want to shake it, which I waited because I didn't want to shake over Sarah talking. Yeah. We're going to shake it. Are you worried it's going to... Put some muscle in. <laughs> you want to have a go? Yeah. <laughs> you really don't need to shake it that aggressively to get the <laughs> all right so shake it until it's like so cold you're like no thank you <laughs> and here we go this is gina's shaker thank you gina you're welcome it's beautiful <laughs> and it gets a little frothy when you shake it too which is fun and you want it a little bit diluted like that's fine fun stuff and then are you going to talk to us about our garnishes yeah there? i am um, I made you some garnishes, so you can put those on, but I'll show you how I made them. I just took a cucumber like this, and then I have this Y um, peeler. These are my favorite. I just bought them on Amazon. Um, Oxo makes a really good one, too, though. <laughs> Amazon. Um, we should get them to sponsor And us. now they're made of, like, this ceramic material. It used to be made out of, like, metal that would rust. But oh, now, really? Yeah. Now it's not. Nice. Um, we would always fight over these in culinary school like who had the sharpest peeler <laughs> is the best one um if you if your cucumber this cucumber is like very straight so it's not really going to be an issue but if you have a more curved cucumber i suggest cutting a flat piece so that your cucumber lays flat on your cutting board so you're not kind of like following it around but i'm just going to peel from top to bottom you don't need this first little peel piece which is exactly what you could do when you're infusing the gin, too. I used a knife just that got a little bit thicker slices, but yeah. you could just do these peels. You make these nice little ribbons. Um, with this one, you will have to stop once you reach the seeds, but then we just chopped it up and ate it. It was fine. Um, when you get to the seeds, it will just start to split down the center, and then you won't be able to use your garnish. Um, but for the first garnish, I just took this and rolled it up into a little roll yeah so we provided you Hold with two different kinds of garnishes here first so was had, the roll yeah this that cute little roll <laughs> yes i invented this the roll no and then you just put it on a toothpick if you have cute little fancy toothpicks this is the best time to use those or um the other one is kind of this is fun little wave you just fold it like oh, how it's like accordion style like where you're folding it over each other and then I would kind of like pinch it tight and then stick your toothpick in and that's when you would then kind of like stretch it out. We didn't bring any toothpicks out here. Yeah, well. Um, and this is so easy for like a big impact. Then you, you know? just stretch like, it out on the toothpick so you get this kind of fun, like this one looks kind of janky and but it, I like how it's It does totally and especially organic when you kind of just, looking. so I just like lay it in the drink. So we were talking about you can get longer toothpicks so that it kind of sits on the drink and like you and yours who we do cocktail classes with have these like adorable like tiny tiny clothes pins where they'll like clip a little thing of dill or something on there <laughs> on which the like maybe next time yeah which is super cute too so that's how you can like go above and beyond but when you put that in there it's so cute it doesn't matter if it looks janky like outside of the no i love it um and then we're doing just a little lavender because it's fun and also like a slight floral element as you drink it and you're gonna smell it a little bit is nice i think with the cucumber and then, like we said, the cucumber blossom. These are fun. Yeah. And it's just so cute. Look at that drink. Come on. Cute. I don't want to spill on the microphone. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. People are loving the cucumber flavors. Ooh, so healthy. Does everyone feel healthier? <laughs> you spilling again? Come on a diet. <laughs> Drinking my green, cucumber my green diet. juice. Ooh. This is pretty fresh juice. We juiced them yesterday. I mean, really, know, the flavor so of good. this I feel like is something so unique I'd never really had before. Because when you taste this, there is something in here that I can't quite put my finger on. And well, I'll try to help you put your finger on it, but we're not going to get all the way there because there are some secrets about the Benedictine oh, recipe. What is it? So first of all, I just need to say the website is a delight. <laughs> Please <laughs> go on their website. <laughs> Um, the 27 first, different herbs. Yeah, so they only list, so much like the Appenzeller blend and like a bunch of different cheeses where they wash it with different stuff or they have like, you know, out blossom, they don't reveal all of their secrets. 
because they don't want to be out of a job, and that makes total sense. They only reveal 21 of them. A memorable experience for your senses. Oh, just wait. So on, so on the website, <laughs> there's this quote where they're telling you where they make the liquor, and it is, distilled and aged in a flamboyant place. Oh. Um, so that's fun, and it turns out it is, I guess, flamboyant. I don't know. I mean, it's French, so... Probably. Who knows? It's probably flamboyant there. Um, it is, they made a palace, which is also a factory. So the story is that this um, liquor was first made by um, a Benedictine monk that was named, um, let's see, Bernardo Vincelli. And um, that was in 1510. And it was wow. first imported to the U.S. in the late 1800s, 1888, wow. which is insane. They've been importing it since then. Um, and You're then back. once the last survivor, so he was in a Benedictine Abbey, which is an order of monks. Um, and then when the last surviving monk um, died, um, this guy named, what's his name? Alexander Legrand, he took over. He got the recipe from the last monk and he was like, this is awesome. Let's sell it. You know? Yeah. So he built this factory, but in fact, it's a palace. He was like, well, we need a factory, but also I like palaces. So he literally <laughs> just built this like flamboyant palace. Yeah. <laughs> they have photos of it online. It's amazing. I and that's where the factory it. is. And they make a couple different ones, but this is, I think they only make three. Oh, what are the others? Um, I, they're just slightly different variations. I think one might be like sweeter. One might be more bitter. Oh. Um, so he decided to call this liquor Benedictine to kind of pay homage to the Benedictine monk who came up with it. And then the Dom, D-O-M, that you're going to see here. And I don't think they sell like knockoff Benedictine, but like definitely it's always going to look like this. They have bigger bottles and this is a small bottle, but it's going to look like this with the seal. The D-O-M stands for Deo Optimo Maximo, which means like in God we trust or something. We love God, something like that. Or God. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to put that on there to just like, again, pay homage to the monks who made it. Totally. Um, so the 21 herbs, I could list them. That seems like a lot. But the major ones are um, lemon balm, angelica, and hyssop. Is that how you say it? I have no idea. Yeah. I've, I should have asked my wife. Yeah. She knows all about this. I did ask her what angelica root was, and she was like, one of those herbs. I'm like, that's helpful. <laughs> um, but there are a ton. Like, there's thyme in here. There's coriander, clove, juniper, vanilla, orange peel, honey, red berries. Um, but one of the things they do add right before they age it is um, they blend saffron and honey. So saffron, mm. that's expensive. Yeah. Um, so it's awesome that they make this. Um, so I thought that was fun. I love it. Yeah, very into it. All right, cheeses. I already tried it with the mid -crime. It was delicious. Great. Mm -hmm. See? And the little mountain, idea. also good. Have you ever tried mid with anything and thought, no, thank you? No. Great. Have it. Good talk. <laughs> um, so the first cheese that we're going to pair this with is in the lower left-hand corner. It's in those chunks. Um, this is the Cabot Cloth Bound Black Label. So you guys are getting something really special. We have the Cabot Cloth Bound a lot, but we don't often get the Black Label. And that's because that's their special reserve label. So this is a cow's milk cheese. It is pasteurized. Mm. Um, it's aged, again, the age range is nine to 14 months. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, so again, whenever it hits its peak, that's where we are. Uh, is that before or after they label it as black label? This is before. Okay. So just regular Cabot cloth bound can be aged anywhere from nine to 14 months. Okay. So the cool thing about Cabot Cloth Bound is the cheese itself is made at Cabot Creamery. Now, anyone from the East Coast definitely knows Cabot. They do sell it out here, but here it's more like Tillamook Country, so, mm -hmm. which is fine. <laughs> um, we actually did a blind taste test of Tillamook and Cabot at my last friend's ski trip. Which one did you like better? <sighs> I hate to say it. You but like it, the Tillamook? Yeah, I didn't do it. I facilitated the tasting. Oh, okay. But it wasn't... It, we made... There were problems. The cabot that we could get our hands on was pre-sliced, like those cracker cuts, oh. which are still delicious, but I think it, it gave a textural advantage to the Tillamook block we had. We're gonna sure, repeat sure, it, sure. we're gonna repeat it, so. Um, but they're both amazing. Uh, Tillamook and Cabot are both like co-op creameries, mm -hmm. so like if you're looking for a grocery store cheese, you wanna buy one of those. Yeah. Like they support their farmers, the milk's really good, and the cheese is really good. 
Um, but Cabot makes some more special cheeses as well as their like grocery store packaged cheeses. And one of them is this one. And they decided, it was in 2003, they decided, okay, we have this cheese, but we want it to be aged a little longer, but we don't really have like the capacity or the knowledge. Like most of our cheeses aren't super aged. Let's ask someone to age it for us. So they asked Jasper Hill, which is super, um, super famous cheese place in Vermont, um, run by what it's Matteo Keller, um, the Keller brothers, and they aged it for them. And it's such a fun collaboration. Totally. Um, and they do, I mean, they do a great job. So they, so this is a cloth bound cheddar. What does that mean, Rachel? I'm gonna have you explain. Oh, okay. Back to cheesecloth. <laughs> is it? It's sometimes cheesecloth. Yeah, yeah. Is it always cheesecloth? It's a. I don't know. They call it bandage, like a bandage yeah, wrap. It's just such a layer of layer of cloth. But yeah, it's like a cheesecloth. It's like a cheesecloth because we have to cut it off when it gets here. It comes to us with the cloth on it. Uh, it doesn't have the cloth on now. You can't cut through it, um, and it's very thick and like pretty much on the cheese. Um, and if you're ever like, does this have the cloth on it? Just try to cut it. If you can't cut it, it has the cloth yeah, on it. Yeah, you'll know, like, <laughs> if it's on the rind. Um, but it just has the cloth on the outside. Is it dipped any in sort of liquid first? Yeah, or they, like a brine? Um, they coat it in lard. Oh, that's why it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then it has the bandage on the outside, and I feel like it adds a super earthy flavor. Mm -hmm. It really adds so much depth of flavor to the cheddar and kind of gives it that hard crunchy on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, do you know why people started doing it? Like, or just as a different version of a rind because they don't want to necessarily add wax to it because it's still, the cloth is still like permeable. I think that's exactly why. Yeah. It definitely started in England and England is super famous for their cloth bound cheddars, um, like Montgomery's oh, and um, yeah. what's the other one that tastes like horseradish? Lincolnshire poacher. Oh, well that one too, oh. yeah. Um, Keen's, Keen's cheddar, yeah. Uh, which are great, but it, it's funny, when people come in and ask for a cheddar, I'm like hesitant to recommend this, even though it's incredible and it still tastes cheddar And it cheddery, is a cheddar, yeah. It's, it's so just not, different. Yeah, exactly. It's not what we always think of. I'm just like holding this. It's like so there. savory. It really... Yeah, it's totally. It's different. It, it's not that like sharpness that we're used to, but it's still got that cheddar acidity to it. Mm -hmm. um, but they definitely started in England, and, and my thought is that they started exactly what you're saying. They didn't want to wrap it in wax because they still wanted like the environment to kind of help permeate it, but they wanted it to last longer and be able to age longer. Yeah, no, because the uh, longer the cheese and ages, preservation. yeah, it starts to dry out, number one. And number two, the rind starts to get really dry. Like you've seen the Parmigiano Reggiano has got a really hard rind on it, and that's because that's just left in the open to age. And that would happen to any cheese that you just left open to age. So putting something with moisture, like the fat, the lard on the totally. outside is gonna help um, keep some moisture too. So we, we love this cheese, totally. um, nice and earthy. We thought that the earthy flavors of this paired well with the earthiness of the cucumber. And I didn't want to say if it's if the drink is a little too earthy for you, um, you can always add in another sugar cube too. Mm -hmm. I like it like this, but it, there's no shame oh, in I adding a sugar cube because you know sometimes we just want it a little sweeter. Um, and then this, like we were saying, is the black label. So this is like the, they, I think there's a quote, like the finest representation of this cheese. So as they're tasting and as the cheeses are aging, they choose different wheels that are tasting the best and they age them for like slightly longer. In this case, I don't even think they really age them for longer. I think no, it's more just like these like are the best them. ones that they're taste like, the best. Yeah. <laughs> so that's exciting. Because they talk, it's like a grading system where like, you know, a certain, I don't know if they always use numbers or if it's like it hits all of these points, but like, these are like the perfectly grated cheeses. It hits all of the notes it's supposed to hit at the right amount of each flavor, you know, and they, these master graters that, um, yeah. not graters that grate the cheese. Well, they might also grate, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> cheese pun. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like wine spectator. It's like an 100 point wine, like they would keep exactly. that. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Or it's like when you're tasting wine to age, you keep the best wine to age longer, even though in this case they don't necessarily age it for longer, but you could. Yeah. So it has the potential to age longer too. Yeah. So this wheel is just really special. We don't always get the black label. Yeah. And this cheese, the Cabot Cloth Bound Black Label, won in 2006 the American Cheese Society Best in Show. We have two Best in Show cheeses on this plate, which wow. is super exciting. Like that's the highest level of award you can get in the US. Mm -hmm. 
So. And you get two of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. boom, boom, 2006, 2016, whoa, a decade. Mm-hmm. All right, and then our last cheese on the bottom right in these triangles, this is lamb chopper. Lamb chopper is a sheep's milk gouda. It's pasteurized. It's also vegetarian. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Gotta go. <laughs> does that mean it's not made with sheep's milk? Yeah, so people get confused between vegan and vegetarian, which is fair. It's confusing. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not vegan. It is made out of sheep's milk, but it's vegetarian because they use a vegetarian rennet or like a bacterial rennet to coagulate the cheese. So when you have your milk, you need to separate it into the curds and the whey, and you need something to do that, and that is rennet. Traditionally, the way they discovered how to make cheese was that they like basically left cheese like in a in a sack made of like calf stu- like a cow stomach. Rob always tells right? the story. Yeah, this the rope, is like not it, the rope for the. No, other no. One. I mean, and who knows if this is where you got it from? But like this farmer is like on his farm and. Uh, a calf died, but you have to still use what you've got and use up your animals to provide for your farm. So he needed to travel. You've got this stomach from the calf. And so he filled it with milk to carry milk on his voyage, set it down to do some farming work, came back. It was coagulated, curds and whey. And then someone was like, hey, we should eat that. (laughs) Which is (laughs) insane. I know, right? It's like, this is bonkers. But, um, and that's how they figured out it coagulated milk, and you add some salt, and it tastes delicious. That's how cheese was invented. Mm-hmm. Wrap it in just some... Like, this could be a bag. Yeah. <laughs> right? This could be a bag. What are we going to discover? Nothing <laughs> like that. could be a bag? Nothing. <laughs> so, um, traditional cheeses that are still made traditionally, so, for example, Alpine-style cheeses, Swiss cheeses, um, are made with animal rennet. Um, So they still use the calf stomach and it's an enzyme in the stomach that helps separate the cheeses. But vegetarian cheeses are made with basically like a lab made rennet or like a natural rennet. So like there's thistle, Mm -hmm. you can use thistle rennet, but that's like super expensive and hard to get. Those are mostly Portuguese cheeses that use those. Yeah, and it has a real strong flavor. Exactly, like a bitter, kind of bitter taste. Um, yeah, but so now we can kind of create different rennets. So um, in our shops, you'll see we have a little um, sticker on our tags that'll be yellow and it has a V on it, and that means it's vegetarian. And some vegetarians care about this and some don't, and that's fair. Whoever, you know, if you want to know, we'll let you know. Um, and that also applies to wines. We talk about mm-hmm. this too. When you're fining a wine, so you're kind of like straining it in a way, mm-hmm. um, they use like a fish enzyme um, to do that. And some wines, so some wines are vegetarian, technically, and some aren't. So vegan, in that case. What? Oh, some yes, that vegan. would be vegan. That yes. would be vegan. The Thank you. If you ever like, why am I worried if wine is vegan or not? I yes. know, because I I was, was no in, I had no idea, and I saw a wine labeled vegan. I'm like, what does this even mean? And I think I learned about it, and and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Ruined many people's lives explaining vegetarian cheeses to them. I know. It's like what you didn't <laughs> want to know. It's like people come in. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, oh, no. Why does this say vegetarian? And this does not. And we're like, oh, boy. So, <laughs> like, right. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> um, but so Lamb Chopper is vegetarian rennet. So don't worry about that. Um, it is technically made in the Netherlands. And then they ship it to California to Cypress Grove. And they age it. So it's another like kind of collaboration mm-hmm. situation. Um, it's sold under the Cypress Grove label. Label. Um, it is wrapped in wax, like most Goudas traditionally are. It's aged about three months, so it's on the younger side of Gouda for sure. You, you don't. I mean, I feel like I get the essence of crystals. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of grittiness. Yeah, um, but still mostly creamy. Yeah. What would you say? I feel like six to eight months is where you really start getting those crystals. And what are those crystals made out of, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't tell me all of these. Um, They're tyrosine crystals, so that happens when the amino acids in the milk start to crystallize as the cheese ages. So Mm -hmm. the older the cheese, the more these crystals they're going to have. If you've had our Wheels of Nord Hollander lately, it's a famous aged Gouda, aged for about four years. I feel like the wheels we have lately are maybe a little bit older. Mm -hmm. uh, They're a really dark color and have a lot of those crystals in there. H goudas you find them sometimes in parmesan they're just like a little bit lighter like a little bit dustier not quite the same as in a gouda but cheddar sometimes have mm-hmm, them but totally. 
If you see a close up, we'll have to take a picture or something. Uh, sometimes you can cut through a wheel of Gouda and you see like the holes or the mm -hmm. eyes of the cheese, and it's just like filled with those crystals in there. And it's, it's crazy. Yeah, tyrosine crystals. They're um, not salt crystals. They're not salty in any way. It's just like that crunch that um, comes from the amino acids. Exactly. Thank you, Sarah. Fun fact you can share at your next dinner party. <laughs> Everyone loves the fact. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so we thought that the um, kind of slight sweetness of the cheese paired really well with the earthiness. So this is more like a contrasting pairing, whereas I'd say the Cabot Cloth Bound is more of a like similar pairing. Uh, yeah, so that's that. I'm how are we feeling? The, how are we doing? I'm back to the minute grandma. All right, you need to calm down mm, with that. Yeah. It's so good. Also, I was going to say Gina loves eating the rosemary and the lamb chopper is on top of the rosemary. So, so when good. I ate it, it had rosemary. <laughs> With the cucumber I, drink, I'm sure it'd be really good. Oh, yeah. Like, you could do rosemary. I know we, like, Delish. torched some rosemary last time. You mm -hmm. could put that in there. Ooh, we should have torched the lavender. I don't know. I don't have a torch handy. Sorry. I know. I have mine at home. <laughs> we <laughs> have one in the back, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. We have one in the back, yeah. Sarah, cook, Sarah does pop-up dinners I have, here. like, it's a amazing. whole selection of random equipment back there. She literally makes, like, what, five, five course dinners in Six. the back? Six. So sorry. Six. Six in the back of the shop it's incredible and i think we're gonna start doing some public ones too we've been just doing private ones so you can book it for you and like 10 of your closest friends mm -hmm. um can always do that but we're gonna start some public ones so you only have to buy a ticket and come sit with some strangers but yeah it's so fun yeah it, it's it she's really incredible Thank you. does anyone have any questions Are we doing okay favorite cheese of the night favorite cocktail of the night what was your favorite? Mita crema with both? <laughs> no, I mean, both were great. I feel like this round of the Corona Sunrise was, like, better mm -hmm. than the first time we made I it. Agree. And I also liked it then, so I don't know what we did different or... I think that we were still just, like, working out the cocktail as we were, like, taking sips and, like, let's add this, let's add this. And so this final version was the best. Um, but I love the cucumber drink. It's so fresh and fun. Yeah, it looks like you need another one. I do. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, we've come to a close here. Um, thank you guys for joining us. We'll go over some, we have some events coming up too that you can sign up for. Um, what do we got? We got a Vino Carta class coming up yes. that I'll be teaching on Monday the 17th. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a French mountain wine and French cheese pairing. So they're amazing. If you haven't been, we're doing it at the one in Solana Beach. Really cool. So that should be fun. Yep. Um, we have one coming up with the Green Wine Company. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be these two guys we met at like a food festival we went to and they were so fun and personable and we just like instantly connected and then we talked about doing classes together and now here we are doing a class. Um, they're bringing all wines from the Vino Verde region. They correct me on that. It's Vino Verde. Yeah, I've been Vino saying Verde. Vino Verde. It's pretty nope. embarrassing. Vino Verde. And it is a region in Portugal. It's not just one wine. There's not just Vino Verde and that's it. It's a bunch of different it's grapes. It's a bunch of different grapes mm -hmm. from this region. And the tasting meeting we had with them was just incredible. It really like expanded my knowledge of Portuguese wine. So it's I'm very excited. Totally, for and that it. was just the tasting yeah, meeting to we pick had. The like, I'm so excited. The I'm so excited for the class because I'm like, I'm gonna learn so much, and yeah. we're gonna bring in, I think, maybe one or two of their wines too to, to sell, sell the, the shop. shop. Yeah, it'll be really fun. Yeah. We have a fromage with friends coming up too. We're comparing deli cheeses to Venissimo cheeses, so like sliced Swiss from the deli yeah, like counter <laughs> compared yeah. to uh, Venissimo Swiss and. Um, I think we're doing a cheddar, like a brie, like just to see the difference of the two and why you should buy our cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marketing ploy. No, yes, kidding. really. Um, but for those of you who do like the virtual format, that's another fun option. There'll be a bottle of wine you can add on that'll yes. pair with the Venissimo cheeses. Maybe not the grocery store ones. I don't yeah. know. But yeah. And then Sarah has a class coming up too with Bivouac Cider. It's going to be oh, yeah. downtown. It's not um, up yet, but we'll get the link in the next couple of days and look out for that. Mm -hmm. All kinds of ciders we're pairing with some fun cheeses, all like fruity yeah. ciders, like a mixed berry and a pineapple, super fun. Yeah, it's going to be really good. So that's that. Any final words? Any final Everyone's comments? Excited questions? for them all. Great. Right. Pairings already have tickets. Some people are oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I love uh, when people come in and they're like, we, we usually do your cocktail classes. It's so fun to finally see you in person. I'm like, well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
Thank you guys so much for supporting this. We have a lot of fun doing it. I know we always say this, but we just appreciate you very much. And it's super fun for us. And we just hope it's super fun for you. Yeah. And we'll continue it if you like it. And if anyone has any ideas for what we should do next, I mean, we'll come up with something. But if you have something like specifically you want us to do, we've been talking about a martini class. We've been talking about- Tiki drinks. Tiki drinks. Yes, that's definitely going to be drinks. one. I feel like martinis needs to be like warmer weather. Yeah, definitely. I don't know why. Definitely. Or um, colder weather. Oh, colder. Yeah. Yes. Wait, need, why? They're super cold drink. We'll discuss off camera. Because I feel like you drink it <laughs> and it like gets you all warm. It's not like, oh, a, you I know, see, so I you're see. like sitting by the fire, like under a blanket by sure. your Christmas tree, drinking a martini. <laughs> that's what I picture you doing. <laughs> <laughs> I do do that. So that's fair. And Roger is also an aficionado of martinis. So I, I'm not, yeah, I mean, he definitely doesn't want to be in front of the camera, I don't think, but maybe we can convince him to do a cameo or at least give us some advice or quotes or something that we can what share. Tell a joke. Yeah. Tell a joke. Dad Oh, joke. a dad martini uh. joke. So get excited for that. A dart, a dartini joke is fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you to everyone. We really appreciate you. Happy summer. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, there's been lunch. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Do we have to check it now?